Herzlich willkommen zum facettenreichen Podcast Das Herz einer Frau Kommunikation, Emotionen und Temperamente Hallo und herzlich willkommen beim Podcast Das Herz einer Frau. Mein Name ist Kim Yasmin und es gibt heute ein Folgen-Special. Die Folge findet auf Englisch statt und ich hatte gleich die Möglichkeit, vier Frauen zu interviewen. Das Interview hat in Göteborg stattgefunden und ich kann gar nicht sagen, wie froh und glücklich ich bin, dass ich die Möglichkeit hatte, gleich ja, vier Frauen auf einmal äh, in diesem Interview zu haben, aus zwei unterschiedlichen Ländern sogar. Die eine ist aus Göteborg, die anderen drei aus Philadelphia. Und wir sprechen über die Frage, wer ist Gott? Was ist Gemeinschaft? Was ist letztlich sozusagen so eine Art göttliche Liebe? Und am Ende auch die Frage, muss es sowas wie eine Kirche geben? Wie wichtig ist Kirche? Und hat Kirche heute überhaupt noch eine Bedeutung? Ich, wie, äh, ich finde, dass diese Folge ja, sehr zum Nachdenken anregt. Ähm, mich selber hat das Interview sehr berührt. Und ja, ich bin gespannt, was ihr zu dieser Folge sagt. Teilt euch gerne dann wieder in den Kommentaren. Teilt euch in den Kommentaren. Tauscht euch in den Kommentaren aus. Lasst mich wissen, wie ihr es fandet. Lasst die Mädels wissen, wie ihr es empfunden habt. Und ihr könnt natürlich auch mir oder auch den vier Damen schreiben. Ganz, ganz viel Spaß. Herzlich willkommen beim Podcast Das Herz einer Frau. Ich sitze hier in Göteborg, was total unglaublich ist, und zwar mit vier wundervollen Frauen, die gehören dem Projekt SOS Church an. Das ähm, Interview wird auf Englisch stattfinden, also wundert euch nicht. Ähm, ich hoffe, dass ihr die Möglichkeit habt, vielleicht irgendwie Freunde mit dazu zu nehmen oder so, die übersetzen können, oder ihr versteht es einfach. Wir werden versuchen, langsam zu sprechen. So I promise them that we speak slowly, <laughs> just in case, because we have different accents here. So I welcome um, Anna. She is from SS Church here in Gothenburg. Yes. Um, I welcome Kira, um, Tika and uh, AJ. They are coming from SS Church of Philadelphia. Is it correct? <laughs> Not quite SOS Church, but yes, Philadelphia. We're Philadelphia. friends with SOS Church. Okay, you're friends. <laughs> we talk, yeah, we, we are starting to talk about the project. Let's go a step back. Yes. Um, when, when did you guys meet? I mean, we sit here with like two different countries, uh, <laughs> two different places. Actually, we met this week. Oh, wow. <laughs> and they are part of a church called City Life in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And we are friends with their pastor. So we... Got, they got an invitation from us that we will, wanted to have this week that we called I Love Gothenburg and we asked if somebody wanted to come and they wanted to come. So, so I've never been to Philadelphia. So now you got to go sometime. Yeah, now yeah. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go um, one more step back. When we talk about your church in Philadelphia, what is the idea that, um, that you are giving out to the world and also why was Gothenburg so interested in working with you? I'll take this. Okay. <laughs> um, so City Life Church is um, is a church that's all about reaching the city that we live in and loving the city. And our motto is love God, love people, prove it. So the idea is if you love God, then you will love people because God loves people. Mm -hmm. So we believe we kind of have his heart for people. And then it's not enough to just say that you love people. You have to actually show that. Mm -hmm. So we prove that through reaching out to our city and serving people and just showing them the love that God has for them. So SOS has the same values that mm -hmm. we have. And because we're friends with them, they, they wanted us to come partner with them this week. Okay, and um, how does it come that Gothenburg, you, you just said before, before we just started the interview, that um, it's actually new in Gothenburg and you and your husband yes. are reaching out now and making this project big. So how did it start in Gothenburg? You so we, were, we are about three or four families moving down here mm -hmm. to start to work. But originally we come from Stockholm, where we have a Swiss church, Stockholm. And then we have sent out people to Malmö, that is another big city in Sweden. And then we sent people to Bien in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. 
and now we have a head on our heart to reach out to Gothenburg. And me and my husband really felt that the, that there was supposed to be us going. So we took our four kids and moved here. Oh, wow. Yeah. And were you scared first? I mean... <laughs> no, no, not really. Okay. It's so much fun to just be a part of what you think. When you when you believe in God, you really think that he has a higher purpose for your life. And then you feel like if you if you do you're supposed to do something, you know it will be so much better for you than where you stay um, when you stay where you are. So I was really not afraid. It's Sweden. It's yeah. so yeah, it's no problem. <laughs> but it felt so much fun and we were so excited. So we we've been working in Stockholm and started up the church there nine years ago from scratch. We were about fifty people in the beginning. Wow. And now we are a big church with almost fifty nationalities. So that is really on our heart to reach all people in Sweden and all over the world actually because SOS SOS in the beginning was a mission organization only. So we work also, like on our all of our spare time, we go out on mission trips, two mm -hmm. weeks at a time, mainly to Africa, and doing all kind of work. We have a big, uh, it's called SOS Aid, where we work with doctors and we do um, help people physically, and we have, uh, we check their eyes, help mm -hmm. with glasses, and we have dentists, and we have a lot of work doing, all the Ooh. time. And at the same time, we have big festivals where we preach the gospel because that is really what we have in our hearts. As she said, that is like if you love God, you love people and you want to help everyone. And that's why in Sweden it's, a, it's really a big thing to help like people from all different cultures. Because in 2015, there were so many people coming from Syria and like... Mm -hmm. Germany yeah. and Sweden were those people, those countries who took so many people, and that has really been on our hearts since then. So now we felt like, okay, we own, we don't have to go abroad to help people from all over the world. People are here coming here. Yes. Yeah. So that's why we've been really focusing on first generation immigrants and second generation immigrants and helping people get to hold of the society, learning Swedish, getting a part of the society because. Every, that is everybody's job to get this world going, to get people to feel loved. That is like to engage in people's lives. When you talk about love for God, and maybe the question to all of you, um, who's God for you? Because I know I'm, I'm asking this question because in Germany you have, have a lot of people who actually go out of the church. And I mean, if, you th if we think about it, a building, a church building is a place of tranquility, a place where people can gather together. But I think a campaign like this actually gives a new also image to that. So, but yeah, when we talk about love, um, who is God for you? I would say that God manifests himself through a lot of different avenues in my life um, and in Christianity, we believe that God comes through as the Holy Spirit, um, and this idea that um, there's Holy Spirit living within each one of us, and um, with my story, I think that God has presented himself through a community of people who rally together, rally together to support one another, and um, rally together to serve others who need help. Um, so for me, God is is that community. He's provided a community of loving individuals um, who build each other up um, and really just work for a greater good. Thank you. <laughs> What is it for you? So my story is a little bit different. So I, I grew up in the church, and so God had always been a concept I had kind of known and was very familiar um, when I got a little bit older, maybe late teens, early 20s, I stepped back from the church for a long period of time, about seven to ten years. Um, oh, wow. I just wasn't sure if um, it was something that I actually believed in. I wasn't sure if I believed everything I had learned when I was younger. And I had gone through a lot of um, hard times that I don't think I would have gotten through and I always had this feeling that something bigger was there and something bigger had helped me through and kind of guided my path um, to a better direction and so I really started thinking is this something that I believe in and it was just meeting a community and meeting people and people had just come into my path and I knew it must be God it must be something bigger than myself And there must be a bigger purpose to this because 
I couldn't imagine living through, going through life and just living, just for the sake of living, without something that must watch over me and protect me, because there's no way I could have gone through the things that I've gone through in my life. And I'm in a great community, and I just felt so calm and so peaceful, and I just felt the need to really believe again mm -hmm. and really go through it again. And it was just amazing and wonderful, and I don't, yeah, it's hard to tell someone and explain to someone unless they go through it themselves, but I think just this feeling of knowing that someone's there that loves you and protects you, and so believing in that, knowing in that, you just want to do that and love other people and just, you, it's almost like you want to, you get this present and you just want to share it with other people and you want them to understand that love and just this bigger plan that you didn't even know existed and then you open this present and you're like, wow, I didn't even know this was a thing and all you want to do is just let people know that this, this present exists and this thing exists. It's interesting when you say that because, um, I mean, one of my backgrounds is also yoga. Yeah. And I think in yoga you have a lot of Hinduism uh, culture. Yeah. Um, and what I, for example, li like about the Hindus is that they are very open to different um, other religions. So they actually celebrate Christmas, for example. And they like it because it's like they have um, sometimes chants in which they, they talk about Jesus, they talk about Allah, they take all goddess inside. And it's like this... There is a, a way, I would even say, an openness towards, like, just, it doesn't have to be a god, it can be in so many, like you've uh, said before, Akira, um, and it, it expresses itself through so many different ways, and um, this is something that always touches me, or when you sit sometimes down and you feel like this inner flame or this love inside of you and just something you want to give out and share, and you don't even know where it's coming from. Would you say, AJ, that we all have like a god, a goddess inside of us? So we believe that we are created in the image of God. Mm -hmm. So God who set the world into motion gave each of us like a piece of him. Mm -hmm. So like what Kira was talking about, the Holy Spirit, um, we believe that when you when you kind of commit your life to loving God, he puts that Holy Spirit in you. And then it is like you have, you have a piece of him. And there are times that I just feel in my heart, we call it the still small voice. It's like, it's like a whisper that you kind of hear, not audibly, but just in your heart. Like, you know, you're kind of being directed to do something. And usually it's, you know, you'll know if you have to make a decision, what's right or wrong that voice will kind of tell you, like, this is the right thing and this is this is what you should do. Mm -hmm. um, or it'll say, like, eh, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't seem so good. I don't think that's good for you or I don't think that's safe. I think that might hurt someone if you do that. So I think in that way, definitely, we have, we have a piece of God in us. Mm -hmm. But we also know the difference between who we are as humans and who he is as mm -hmm. God. So, I mean, there's no one else who has the power that he has or the love that he has. And we just have a fraction of it, but it's such a, like a privilege to have a fraction of that love to be able to give out. I think what is interesting that you say he, it's very interesting that we still put him as a masculine. Yeah. Saying that because, I mean, it's a podcast uh, mainly for women. And I think it's interesting <laughs> that we put him as a him. I sometimes, what do you think about the idea that he is a she or there's any everything inside of this maybe an it I don't know I'm yeah maybe. so I don't I don't believe that God is male or female okay uh -huh. I'm sure we all agree on that um mm -hmm. it's just that the way so we use the bible mm -hmm. as as our main text for how to learn about God and in the bible God is written with he pronouns mm -hmm. and I think that the reason for that is because he wanted to show himself to us as a father mm -hmm. so that we understand that relationship between a child and a father who protects and loves but that doesn't mean that God is a man mm -hmm. and God certainly has many female qualities too and throughout the Bible you see that too that not just fatherly but also motherly mm -hmm. so I think he is just kind of the best way that we have of kind of trying to grasp at understanding who he is but doesn't mean he's a man Okay. <laughs> cool. Um, let's go back to SS Church, Anna. You um, you reached out. You you started now in Gothenburg. So how is it that you give your message out right now? 
Especially how, in this how week. do I do it or yes. why? First, how. And now oh. we can <laughs> <laughs> this week we've been, like I told you before, we've been out on different locations in Gothenburg because we really want to connect with people. We don't know so many people here. We want to make people know that we are here, mm -hmm. that we're an alternative, that they're welcome to our, to us. And then we just want to show love for Gothenburg. So we've been out on the big parks in Gothenburg and doing face painting, doing balloon animals, doing fun stuff for the kids, and giving out free coffee just to have some conversation starter mm -hmm. and people like coffee. And then in the night, Fika. yeah, always Fika, that's always good. And in the evenings, it's also like that. you see the big boards. We have a big boards that where it could tell what what did you write? Like what is what is it to be loved? No, what makes you feel loved? What makes you feel loved? And that is just it's just, it's also a tool to to have uh, start conversations because as you said, the spark inside of you that you feel like something is there. I, in the Bible, you can read that God puts the eternity in our hearts. Mm. That is like, he puts something that makes us long for something bigger than just, you know, cars and houses and stuff. <laughs> they, he really puts something down that you need something else. And we think that is God. We think that is the only way to make, make you feel like really whole again, sort of. Mm -hmm. so, and that is what we want to preach to people. Like... Like uh, she said, that it's it's if you have the best gift, you want to give it to people. But then you have to wrap it up so people listen. Mm -hmm. Because you be like, ba ba ba, don't do this, don't do this. Then they don't listen. You just the the our purpose is just to present what God has, then He has to do the rest. So that is what we're doing out, and that's why we do like, you know, depending on where you are, you do what people, what people love, like face painting. <laughs> it's interesting because I also think in order to. Um, to 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 give yeah to give an idea to others how life can be or to to spark others I think it's first that you have to live it yourself rather than and this is sometimes happening um, I don't know it happens probably all over the world that people go out and tell you what to do but in the end you look at their lives and you think what I mean it's, it's, this is not what you are telling me how I should live my life and yeah. and the other thing what I was just thinking. Um, Uh, about the boards, um, what I really like, uh, I just translated into German. Also ihr müsst euch das wie so Tafeln vorstellen und dann ist eine Frage drauf geschrieben und jeder, der vorbeiläuft, der kann dann quasi mit Kreide eine Antwort schreiben, wie zum Beispiel, what was the question, what do you love to do? What makes you feel loved? Uh, what, ja genau, was, ja, was gibt euch das Gefühl geliebt zu sein, zum Beispiel? Um, so what were, what were the answers you got on this? So, some people put food. <laughs> <laughs> also so interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, people put family, friends, um, a few people put a name of a loved one. Um, what else were, were some other ones? Um, hugs, yoga, coffee, um, <laughs> Jesus. What is your favorite? What did you, what, what, what would you put, Anna? Oh, that's so hard. <laughs> What makes you feel loved? Three things. <laughs> oh, um, I guess it is like uh, consideration. Mm -hmm. People like you, f like you feel loved, you feel appreciated. And really the communion, that is so big. For us, it's the church and the family and all of that. That is a really big thing. I think that people need that. And just... Yeah, coffee's good. <laughs> <laughs> What about you? What are your top three? Um, so I actually wrote on the board my faith. Yeah. Um, and I would also say my parents. I'm very close with my Sweet. parents. Oh, They yeah. show me so much love every day. Um, and then, yeah, my, my friends. I have a really good community and my fiancé. That's four. But That's four. <laughs> he's five. really good at that, too. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh, it really touches me. <laughs> um, I want to want to take one one step further with uh, the project. Do you have like? Are you building right now a church, or are you taking over a church, or when, how does it work no, afterwards? Uh, yeah, many people ask that. How do you start a church? Do you even do that anymore? Because yeah. it's quite rare, or many people think it's really rare. But for us, it's not. The church is not the building. 
So that's why we always get, or we a lot get that question a lot now when we move down. Where will you be? What's the address? What's the building? We start with the people, like with the community. We work, so now in the beginning we meet at our house mm -hmm. in the weeks and you just share life because mm -hmm. that is so big part of it and people can, you know, maybe they have some problems and we can pray together and if they have questions and you know, you just share life. And then we meet downtown, we have, on Saturday we will meet, like tomorrow, right? Yeah. We meet at Odinplatsen, mm -hmm. close to Odinplatsen, we rent the space there, so we will meet there. Just because our living room isn't big enough. Yeah. <laughs> because it's not about church. Yeah. It's about the people in the church. That is the church. That is what I think God meant with building a church. It's not the building. Even if they're really beautiful in Sweden, it's not, that, is, that is not the point. But then when we grow bigger, we have to rent something. Mm -hmm. But that is not. We will start with the people, and then we will find something. It's interesting. I mean... Uh As I know, I mean, Jesus never meant to build churches in a way. It was more like going out and, yeah, yeah. And, and mm -hmm. finding yeah. a way, spreading, yeah, they met being in, their in home community. And, they, yes. yeah. and I think it's also, I mean, I think Sweden is a country like that, and also Germany, you have a lot of, like, singles, a lot of people who yeah. are very, yeah, like, on their own feeling. Somehow it's like being individualist and, like, really supporting the individualism uh, in you, ourselves, but on the other hand, seeing that... This is not working. We are not meant no, to stay definitely. alone and just fighting it through and being like, okay, I do my own thing. Because I think in the end, what strengthens us? And even if you look in history, you always had communities, yeah. people supporting each other. This is how it works. Um, but, Kira, you said something about, um, because you, I mean, you girls, you came here, not only you girls, you have a crew with you, <laughs> um, from Philadelphia, and, um, and you said, All of you have like different intentions why you're here. So what is yours? What's the dream you're having? This was something that I thought about a lot and I encouraged our team um, as we were praying as we were praying and preparing for the trip to think about um, your everyone's specific thought. And I believe that God placed in my heart A scenario or people that I wanted to have conversations with and um, I didn't know what they looked like or what it it was gonna be but I knew that um, I had this idea in my head that I wanted to meet someone and I wanted to sit down and have coffee <laughs> and it's so funny that you asked that because as we were um, walking back to our cottages after we met you on the street Tika turned to me and she said this is it this right here is exactly what God placed in your heart for this trip, is being able to sit down and have coffee with a group of women. Wow. <laughs> what is it for you, Kira? Is it the yeah, sitting down? <laughs> <laughs> um, so for said. me, my dream was, I think because I had so many, um, earlier in my life, just so many questions about um, the Bible and religion, I think having this opportunity now that I'm very comfortable in what I believe in and very passionate about just letting people know that they're loved, um, having this opportunity, I can let other people know that as well. And other people that might not necessarily believe that in this and um, might have questions. I know for me in the past, sometimes people have had bad experiences with the churches or feel judged, and so they don't want anything to do with the church because of that judgment. And so I think as I've gone through life and I've made very healthy connections and have a very healthy community, that's not something I feel. And so I just want to share my story with people and let them know that's not, that's not what it's about, and there's so much more to it. And so Yeah, this opportunity was just my way to be let people know that that's not there's more to it than than that, and it is good and it is healthy and it's not condemning. It's mm -hmm. it's brings life, mm -hmm. and I just want people to know that that life. And, yeah. Aj, you you also work a lot with music at the in the evenings. You are a singer, and uh, I recognize that uh, especially the three of you. I mean. You have amazing voices, you. but you also sing uh, in uh, in Philadelphia, or you generally tour. Yeah. Um, what are your songs about, and what is it? What inspires you to write your songs? 
So the songs that we're doing here yes. are pop songs yes. because we wanted to do songs that most people would know and be able to immediately connect with, and I love doing that. Mm -hmm. um, but we also, in Philadelphia, um, we do something very similar to what the SOS Church does here. We sing songs that we call worship songs, and uh, we write our own worship songs as well as singing songs that other you know, famous bands have made. Um, but the point of a worship song is to help people connect to God. Mm -hmm. So when we have a service... Like mantras a little bit. Kind of I like think, mantras, yes. yes. Yeah. So, so when we have a service, we start with worship because we believe that music is something that kind of just makes people relax. And music can kind of disarm the anxiety that we come in the room with. And when we start playing, a lot of times you see people just kind of like slow down and start to connect and start to think about something other than all of the stuff that's going on in my head. Mm -hmm. And the lyrics of the songs are very specifically pointed to God and with the purpose of helping everyone together have this experience of connecting with God. So those are the kind of songs that we do most of the time. And there's just so much joy in that. Um, we look out from the stage and we see people closing their eyes or smiling or sometimes they dance. It's just everyone kind of has their own way of connecting, but you mm -hmm. see how the fact that people are connecting with God is just changing them in that moment. And they walk away feeling refreshed. And we walk away feeling refreshed, too, because we're having the same experience. We just happen to be playing instruments. Yes. But we're all doing the same thing. Wow. Anna, if you can go, let's say, five years from now, what's your and your husband's and also the other the three families' vision of Adolf Gothenburg, SOS Church? Like how does it, how should it develop? We're longing for this, what we're talk, talking about, to really be some something for that is, that is a blessing for Gothenburg. We want to grow as a church, as a community, and have people from all over, like really including, because we have a lot of different nationalities in Gothenburg, as well as we do in Stockholm and all over, over Sweden. And we really love to get people together side by side. Maybe they wouldn't have spent so much time to get it if it wasn't for the church. But I really think that is the strength about the church. You can find like strength in each other and find each other that is not really, you know, not the same age, not the same culture, you know, put people together. And that is really what we long for, to have a, a, big, a big community mm -hmm. in Gothenburg that is life-giving for the city. Is there a website or something that yes. I will also put it in the show notes? But um, yes, we have. Yes, what is it? Sosgbg.se. Oh, okay. So you can put write down the address maybe, and we have Instagram if they have that. That is also easy, so we can make some flash if they're visiting Gothenburg. <laughs> and is there uh, something in Germany already in that direction? In Germany, only in Switzerland okay. and Bienn. That okay. is what we're working. Not, uh, not so yet yeah. in Germany, but we'll learn <laughs> what Berlin it? would be. <laughs> I, I think many... you would actually have a good platform yeah. in Berlin. Yes. <laughs> I know many people would love to go to Berlin, so maybe in the future. We'll see. Cool. So, um, first of you, thank you so much for your time, for your honesty, um, that we actually made it happen, which is <laughs> somewhat totally crazy. Um, if it's okay for you, I would um, put uh, a song of yours in front. So sure. That, uh, get an idea of how, how a worship song can sound like. Yeah. And, yeah, I, um, I wish you all a fantastic day. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Und äh, ja, euch auch vielen, vielen Dank. Ihr habt gemerkt, es gibt ganz unterschiedliche Wege, Gott in, ein, in einem selber zu erkennen, die Göttin in einem selbst. Es muss nicht der Gott sein, es kann vielleicht auch was anderes für dich sein. Aber es ist auf jeden Fall was ganz, ganz Tolles zu glauben und sich als Gemeinschaft zusammenzutun. Wenn ihr Fragen habt, schreibt mir gerne oder hinterlasst einen Kommentar. Ähm, ich werde in die Show Notes auf jeden Fall auch die Webseite packen, falls ihr interessiert seid. Und wünsche euch einen schönen Nachmittag. Lasst dein Herz brennen.